Hello, 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 everybody. I am J-Moles from J-Moles Gaming, and welcome to my new weekly series, where I cover the games I have played this past week and any gaming-related news that interests me. And now, welcome to the J-Moles Weekly Gaming Recap. I thought I should start off this episode this week by talking about Warcraft 3 Reforged and my general thoughts about the game so far and how I've been enjoying it. So, so far, I've been only really playing two modes. I've been either playing the campaign, or I've been playing custom games against the, against the you know, the AI. On easy, because it's been years since I last played Warcraft 3. Had to get my hands re readjusted to the controls, get used to macro, get used to micro, all that good stuff. Now, I have run into a few of the problems I've been hearing about with the Warcraft 3, re specifically with the Reforged update to Warcraft 3. I have been encountering a bit of lag every now and then. It doesn't last long, only for like a second to like a second and a half. And it happens kind of rarely, but it tends to happen when I do something. So when I build a unit, for instance, or when I build a building, for instance. When I do something like that, it tends to cause a bit of a spike only every now and then. Maybe once or twice a match at that. And it tends to happen near the beginning of a match from what I've been seeing. Maybe they'll go away with time, maybe it's a known bug and they'll address it, it's just something I've been experiencing. But yeah, overall, Warcraft 3 has been pretty smooth for me outside of that one issue. I kind of like the updated graphics, I think some of the models could have used a bit of work. But, like, particularly for me, I really like the updates that were given to the Night Elf race, and Night Elf is... Always been probably one of my favorite races in Warcraft 3, and I'm thinking from here on out, I'll probably main Night Elf, and maybe use Human as an alt or something. I haven't necessarily decided. I just feel like Night Elf feels more visceral to me, and some of the heroes, I really like the utility that they have. Like, I like Tranquility, I like having Priests of the Moon with the Moon Fire, I like Demon Hunter's Metamorphosis, and I like having the Mana Burn. I like Warden's gameplay where you're able to blink, you have to throw a dagger, you have Phantom Knives, you can go to Avatar of Vengeance. I like that style personally. I really enjoy having the Wisp as your main worker unit. I find that particularly well suited for my tastes personally. I'd say secondly, second to that would be Undead with the Acolyte, which I do kind of enjoy, but Acolytes feel really precious when in a Wisp. I feel just has more utility, where I can go put it into a tree somewhere and have it scout for me, permanently, but also be gaining lumber as a resource. That's a little nuance to it that I really enjoy, and I'd like to learn more about be getting better, really. Not mastering, I'm nowhere near getting mastery level of skill in this game. Just, I'm personally finding a lot of, of Night Elf's toolkit well suited to my taste in an RTS. The map pool is pretty good. It, it's been, the game's been out for years upon years, so the map pool better well be good. Well, yeah, better be good, but of the maps that are there, I quite enjoy Echo Isles. It's a nice, small, confined map. I like Booty Bay. I like Terranus Strand as well. I believe it's called the LV version. I just like that dynamic. It has a wide range of maps with decent locations. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think maybe it could have had... I don't know, I haven't really run into any map that's just a straight-up desert, you know? Because, you know, Warcraft tends to have some deserts in the game. But I don't know. Not the most important thing for me. Campaign's still really good. I enjoy the Warcraft 3 campaign. It's one of my favorites. I like having multiple missions with multiple layouts. I do have a few just aesthetic difficulties difficulties with the Warcraft 3 campaign, and with how some of the races operate, where I would have preferred to just call the human race alliance, because really, there's only a couple humans that are your core units, and it's mainly just dwarves and elves, particularly the elves. It's just, I don't know. If you're going to call the race human, I would have thought most of the units would have been human, but they're not. Again, it's not that big of a deal, because I like the spellcaster units that it does have. I just think maybe they called it Alliance and Horde instead of Human and Orc. I think just that would have been... It would have made more sense, really. Yeah, I just think it would have made more sense. Maybe they don't call them... 
not because you have Alliance of Lord on, and you have Hort. So yeah, it, even lore-wise, it should work. But yeah, like, I had years of casual StarCraft experience. I was never that good at StarCraft, but I played in Fall of the Scene for quite a few years. A few years back, like from 2013 to 2017-ish. Like that range, so adjusting from just a basic RTS game like StarCraft is. Not basic, but you know, just like... When you think RTS, you think StarCraft, really. You think StarCraft Command & Conquer. While WarCraft 3 tends to have RPG elements and as well as a hero dynamic on top of that. Kind of like how Halo Wars does it, as well. I think WarCraft 3 predated that, though, significantly. But, yeah. It's a different style of RTS than what I'm, I'm used to, really. But I do quite enjoy the hero aspect. It's another layer that I just find interesting to me. And that just really appeals to me personally, because one of my favorite things about uh, Halo Wars was having the was having the hero units. I thought that was really cool. And Warcraft 3 has hero units, and they're pretty, really cool hero units. You have like you have your Blade Master, your Farseer, Shadow Hunter, you have Paladin, Blood Mage, Archmage, Mountain King. You have Lich. You have Death Knights. You have Scale Lords, you have Arch Druids, Priests of the Moon, Demon Hunters, Wardens. Really cool. So yeah, that's me on Warcraft 3 for the week pretty much, and those are my thoughts. So let's move on to the next game. Okay, the next game I've been playing has been World of Warcraft. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, because I'm going to have a uh, Human Death Knight leveling series out in the next couple of days. Which I'll go more into depth of, but I've been playing with World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft there, because I've been mainly just playing the Human DK. But I did get my Void Elf Warrior to 110, which was pretty cool. Got the Void Elf armor, which I really like. I think it's a cool aesthetic. Uh, yeah, I've been heavily debating about whether or not I want to go Alliance for Shadowlands, just mainly for aesthetics and story reason, really, more than anything. I know a lot of people are going whore just for end game progression stuff, but that's not really my forte. I'm just trying to find a guild right now, lion side, just to do some basic raiding, maybe go do some heroic. And that's basically what I've been doing with World of Warcraft. So yeah, let's move on to the next game. Okay, another game I've been playing this week is Halo 3 ODST on the Xbox One. I've been playing through the co-op on Legendary with a buddy of mine for quite a while now. But this week, we did beat Halo 3 ODST on Legendary. We banged out the last four or five missions, and it was surprisingly easy. Like, we had to check periodically that to make just to make sure we were on Legendary, because we beat Combat Evolved 2, 3, and 4 on Legendary Co-op, and they are all significantly harder than... ODST on Legendary Hell, we played three, and I believe, yeah, we played three on normal not too long ago, and honestly, ODST and Legendary felt about the same, if not a little difficult, more difficult than Halo 3 on normal, it's just, mobs don't kill you that quick, and you can kill them rather quickly with submachine gun and battle rifle, and the likes. Uh, yeah, just pretty... It's really... That's not, like, a critique or anything, because I found that way more enjoyable than, say, Halo 2 or Legendary, just because I think Halo 2 Legendary has significant problems, which I'll cover in a future video. Just from a mechanics per perspective, it's just I don't find that difficulty in an FPS fun. I find it more cheap and contrived. It's just like, yeah, it's a challenge, but it's really a worthwhile challenge. Or a fulfilling challenge, I'd argue no. And I think Hail Theodist on Legendary is a bit too easy for my liking. However, it was still fun, yeah. Yeah, it was, it's still fun. Uh, whenever they release it on PC, Master Chief Collection, I'll be doing a playthrough of it on the channel as well, so you can look out for that. But yeah, overall thoughts on Hail Theodist, it's pretty fun. Characters are alright. I don't think any of them are particularly well written. Or that engaging, but they're good enough to suffice for the short journey that ODST is. It's a good short campaign, it has decent characters, it's a really fun premise of just being an ODST. 
in the ruins of New Mombasa during the events of Halo 2. It's really atmospheric. I I know it's kind of controversial, but I do enjoy the overworld that Halo 3 ODST does have in between missions. If they want to replicate that with Halo Infinite, I'm all for that, because, yeah, it can be a bit annoying on subsequent playthroughs, but I do feel it adds another dimension to the campaign. It just adds to the atmosphere, the haunting music, just being that feeling of being alone even when you're playing co-op. It's still there, and it's palpable, and it's really well done. It's just something I really enjoy about ODST and why I think make ODST so special compared to all the other Halos. And that's my thoughts on Halo 3 ODST. Let's move on to the next game. The penultimate game I will be discussing today for the games I've played this week will be Halo 4. After we beat Halo 3 ODST, my buddy and I, Connor, we decided to move on to Halo 4 on just a normal playthrough because we've already played 4 on Legendary. Just want to play it on normal to see if it was any more fun. Uh, spoiler alert, no. Uh, main problems with Halo 4 that we're running into. Prometheus is just boring. Like, they, that idea needs to be completely overhauled for Infinite, if, if Prometheans are even there, or it needs to be scrapped entirely, because Prometheans outside, like, I would argue the dogs, like the hound units, I think those are pretty decent to fight, just because they feel impactful when you shoot at them, but everything else is just formulaic and boring and you just feel like bullet sponges. They're not really enjoyable and they don't feel like Halo, and that's my main issue with them. Uh, moving, sidestepping a little bit to the Covenant, uh, the, new art the new art design that Halo 4 brought with it is either really kind to certain things or really bad to certain things, and I feel the Covenant got the really short end of the stick here. I do not enjoy any element of the Covenant art redesign that they got with Halo 4. It's just bad, in my opinion. That everything looks more ugly to the point... Like, yeah, Covenant is not supposed to be exactly a pretty race or a pretty conglomerate of aliens, but good God, can they at least look pleasing to the eye, at least. Like, in in Halo 3 and the original Halos, they, at least grunt, grunts had a certain charm to them, where, yeah, they were these freaky alien things in gas masks, Darth Vader style, you feel me? But they were still kind of cute in their own way, and they didn't look like these freakish monster things you would expect to come out of, like, some kind of grim, dark fantasy tale from, like, a children's book or something. It's really weird and really off-putting, especially when you play the other Halos, the original trilogy especially, before you play this game. I do not know what the hell they were thinking with the Elite design. I just feel like they're too bulky, and they lost that certain sleek charm that they had in my opinion, with Halo 3 and Halo 2 Anniversary. It's just something that's not up to my, up my alley. Maybe it's up... Maybe you personally enjoy it, but for me, I don't see the appeal. And I, I'll say this, at least. Fighting Covenant in Halo 4 feels like fighting Covenant. Like, yeah, there's some there's some issues the game at, the game does have, that I don't think are necessarily that noticeable on f normal that we're playing. But it's just... Their Covenant, their, like, their basic Covenant, I believe it has some issues with weapons being harder to dodge, and just overall Covenant being far too... Not really, just like the projectile. I'm, what, the, what I was trying to get at is projectiles. The projectile weaponry the Covenant has, I feel might be a bit too quick, and less skill-based in dodging them. It's just like, you either get shot or you don't, and there's not really any skill involved. I don't really know how, how exactly to say that. Just, they feel worse to fight than the original Halos. It's hard for me to put my finger on the exact problem, but I feel it comes down to the weapon sandbox, because generally, if Halo has problems in terms of the gameplay department, it generally devolves into either a discussion on how spongy are the enemies, or what's the weapon sandbox of that game like. And to me, the Covenant's not necessarily bullet spongy, like, they feel decent to fight, at least on normal. And even on Legendary, from what I recall, like, they weren't that spongy, it's mainly a weapon sandbox issue, I feel. 
I will say this, though, about the weapon sandbox. Uh, the assault rifle feels freaking beefy. I One of my favorite assault rifles in the entire series, I think. And the sound design of the Halo 4 assault rifle is really nice. Like, I brought it up with my, with my friend Connor, and he agreed with me. It's just how nice that assault rifle sounds. It's, just, it's one of the lone bright spots of Halo 4 that I've come to appreciate over time. And it's just like, the four... Also, going back to the art design for a quick minute, the Forerunner design, not, not talking about the Prometheans, we're talking about the buildings, the architecture of Requiem, the plant you're on in this, during the events of Halo 4. The Forerunner design, to me, is cool. I like how grandiose the planet and all these artificial buildings look. I like how sleek it looks. I know it's not exactly how it looked in the original Halos, but I feel, of all the art design redirections they took with Halo 4 when 343 Industries took over, I feel the Forerunner one was probably one of the better ones. And a criticism my friend brought up, which I believe is pretty justified, where if you don't know the background lore, because there's a significant difficulty curve going from the original trilogy to the new ones in terms of just how much background lore and information you need to know about Halo's story, and if you don't possess that information, everything else just feels lessened because of it. Like, to me, I knew a lot about a lot of the information pertaining to Halo 4, because I was really excited for Halo 4. I tried to learn as much as I could before I first played Halo 4 and back in 2012. But if you don't have that information, yeah, like, you're just going to wonder, like, what's the purpose of any of this? Like, why should this matter to me as a player? And that's a real problem that Halo 4 had. Also, the story. It's just, they throw you... If you go from Halo 3 into Halo 4, they just completely change the direction of the entire series, it feels like. Going from this, not necessarily a character-driven story, that had character-driven elements. It was also more about the world you're in. And you wanted to learn more about the world, and you also wanted to learn more about the characters within. While in Halo 4, it feels like they're trying to really emphasize the character aspect of the story, and make it a really character-driven story, which I'm all for, but it needs more time to develop, in my opinion. Like, I personally enjoy the Master Chief and Cortana relationship, and the story throughout Halo 4. Like, it personally, I like that story. I like that 343 tried to humanize the ma the Master Chief more and tell the story of, is he a man or a machine? Like, I'm a big sucker for those kinds of stories. I just feel like, for to appeal to the broader Halo fan base, you need to have eased people into that story more. Because they really just start you off with Cortana's rampancy. And I feel like I need a mission or two to fully develop and be more subtle. That's one of the main things I think Halo 4 lacks is subtlety. It just wants to throw all the main things in your face. And never give you really a chance to learn for yourself. It wants to tell you it. And that's a problem. In my opinion. That... They certainly didn't solve in Halo 5. We can all agree to that. It's one of the things I hope they do with Halo Infinite, because Halo Infinite is supposed to be a spiritual reboot of the series. I hope 343 Industries learns subtlety, and just let the atmosphere of the game be able to be a tool to, st to tell you the story, instead of just having the atmosphere be there, and trying to tell you the story on top of that. Because... Cortana's rampancy felt really disconnected from the events of Requiem and the Didact and all that. It, it feels kind of out of place. Instead of flowing into one another, into f flowing into each other, it just feels like you're either focusing on the Didact or you're focusing on Cortana's rampancy, and you're never really focusing on both at the same time. And to me, that's kind of an issue. You focus it focus on it later on, but that needs to be at the forefront at the beginning of the game. Because if you don't grip players with a story like this, and a story 
direction changed, like 4 was taking the franchise, you'd need to grab players immediately. I feel 4 kind of failed at that. I think it grab players well enough with the whole planet and just how distinct uh, she, uh, 4 on a shield world was. It just had difficulty blending everything together to a cohesive whole, if that makes sense. Alright, I think I've talked enough about Halo 4 for now. I'll talk about Halo 4 again on the next recap. So, let's move on to our final game. Alright, the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I haven't played much of this game this week. I've really only played the bit I played for the channel. Which is only like 20 minutes worth or something like that. Maybe 30. And it's just a fun game. Like, I got back into it. I want to play more of it. Combat's fluid again, like I said, throughout my series. I like having the abilities. I like how they weaved real-time gameplay with the turn-based elements of the abilities and spells. I like how the game tackles exploration. It's not to an annoying degree where I feel like I have to explore every nook and corner five times to make sure I didn't miss anything. Where collectibles are really obvious and they're shown to you when you turn a corner in a way. Because they're really distinct from everything else. I appreciate that. Personally. But yeah, the, can we have it? A bit of a counter-argument to that would be the destructible objects, but, like, boxes are pretty easy to find and to spot. So, if you just want to focus on getting boxes and chests, you can, because not, they're not that hard to spot. But, yeah, that's generally my thought to Final Fantasy, on the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and let us transition into Gaming Topics of the Week. And now, on to the... Gaming topics of the week that I want to discuss. So, let's talk about the one topic that has really interested me this week. And that's the letter from the producer, uh, 64, for Final Fantasy XIV, Shadowbringers. Now, Yoshida, the producer of the game, hence, letter from the producer, Updated everybody on the situation regarding patch 5.3, Reflections, and Crystal. Because it was supposed to come out on June 16th, but due to the whole, you yeah, know, worldwide thing going on, it has been pushed back a couple of times, and he had to push it back again to August 11th of this year. Which kind of sucks, because we have to go a whole nother month without an update to the game, but it's really, uh, what can you do at this point? It's the logistical problems that a lot of companies are probably facing right now with the whole situation going on around the world. It's, it's understandable. It's something we really can't avoid. I'd rather them just push it back myself instead of launching the patch and it being a buggy mess. Because 5.3 is supposed to be pretty big. You get, We're getting an alliance raid, specifically the second part of the Your Heart Dark Apocalypse raid. We're also getting that new zone for the resistance weapons area, which I'm really looking forward to personally. And yeah, it sucks we have to wait another a little bit over a month for it. Well, I don't know if it's over a month, but you know the feel. It's, it's August 11th, that's when the patch is supposed to be out again. It sucks, but again, it's uh, what, it can, what are you going to do? So, I'm going to look forward to the patch myself. I have some Jobs I want to get up to max level personally, mainly Machinist and Bard. Those are the ones I want to get up to level 80. I am meaning Dark Knight for now, so we'll probably, when the patch comes out, you know I'll be probably doing the content on my Dark Knight. So, we'll be looking forward to that, and that's really all I have for this week on the JMOS Weekly Gaming Recap. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all listening and watching this recap so if you like the video please leave a like and subscribe if you like the video and you want to see more content i know i would appreciate it on the channel coming up we got more warcraft 3 reforged we have more uh more world of warcraft in terms of the human leveling series human dk leveling series mind you we got some more final fantasy 7 remake on the way as well thank you all for tuning in my pleasure for making the video Stay safe out there, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.